Welcome back. I'm Dan. This is just a printer. Okay, I got a couple things to do here today. Got approval to print all these jobs, so I'm setting up actually probably all three of the color machines I'll be running. And we also have 10, 20,000 envelopes here. I'm gonna talk a little bit about envelope printing uh, and how I'm not set up to do it very well, but we're gonna make it work. And if you're wondering about uh, the new to me cutter, it's real nice. Didn't have to do much at all. I cleaned it off, cleaned off some surface rust. The blade that was in here was really dull, uh, which hurt my heart when I was cutting with it. Uh, so I pulled a new blade that I had from my old cutter and put it in here and it works just fine. It's just a little bit short, so I can't cut on this side but uh, at least I can use this blade while I get the other two blades sharpened. We'll be back next week sometime. But yeah, as far as programming goes, it, it takes a little bit longer just to set up a program. Uh, but like yesterday, I did a bunch of postcards, uh, I think four different stacks. And I mean, once it's programmed, now it's in there for good. So now whenever I do an every door direct mail four up postcard, it's, it's fast. It's nice, I, I was totally missing out. So the fuser, for the envelope fuser that I have for the 1070 will fit in the 3070 and thanks to, uh, uh, oh boy, I forget shape. One of my viewers, I know who you are, uh, pointed out that you can get the full rated speed out of one of these machines. So that means uh, this, the 1070 prints at 2000 some envelopes an hour. This will print at 4,000 envelopes an hour, uh, which is right around 30,000 envelopes in an eight hour day, uh, which might sound like a lot, but that's really slow, considering that if you had a, like a home offset, a jet press, those do about 60,000 envelopes an hour. So these are really, really slow. And uh, for like black and white envelopes, or even two color envelopes, uh, more than a couple thousand envelopes, you're gonna to wanna to do offset or inkjet. Uh, but it's quick to do it here. I can have the envelopes really quick. And I also, I kinda of wanna see what these machines can do because I was always a skeptic of putting toner on an envelope. I've always either said, you know, it needs to be an offset press or an inkjet press, but I'm gonna see what happens. And uh, I am going to play musical chairs with the transfer unit since I just put a new belt on here and I don't want to damage the belt. I'm going to swap the transfer units and put the envelope fuser in the 3070 and then start printing envelopes. But before that, I got some, some labels, some tags, a catalog. I just got a bunch of other stuff to print first. Okay, these are done. I uh, just wanted to say, the front to back uh, registration on this is so easy because of the IQ 501. I have been having problems with spots showing up, so I, that's, uh, I have to clean that all the time. That's my only gripe so far. I do want to play with the settings to see if I can't somehow make it less sensitive. So like, I don't care if it sees a spot, just keep doing your job. That's what I want. So now let's cut these down. I'm going to make a program for these, even though it's not really necessary, just so uh, we can see kind of the time it saves. So the reality is, is I feel kind of like a newbie now uh, because I have to change the way I think when I'm cutting uh, because I used to cut by stack and uh, doing it that way, that was the most efficient way. But now that the back gauge is automated, I can change the way I think. But um, I'm trying to still figure out the most efficient way to program cuts in uh, and uh, you know, I'm gonna get better as time goes on. But if you have any comments or tips about that, you know, let, it, let me know. Now let's see if I remember how to rotate it. And you can actually put in arrows to help you remember, but I didn't.
Sorry. And it pushes it out and resets. Now it's ready to do the next one. That's fast. So yes, that is very nice and extremely quick for everybody that said I was missing out. You are absolutely right. I was wrong. Okay, that's kind of fun. I'm looking forward to cutting something else down on there, but we need to get printing some envelopes. So first what I'm gonna do is swap the transfer belts. Well, actually, sorry, the whole unit. I think the biggest bummer of running envelopes on here is that you can only load like 250 envelopes at a time. I'm really tempted to try and find a stream feeder and see if I can't get it to work uh, through the bypass here. I could probably take this unit, put it here, uh, and then hook a stream feeder up to it. It would take a little bit of manipulation, but I'm pretty sure you could do it. Uh, but anyways, I got my number nines in there. My proofs are okay, so let's fire this up and see, uh, see what it's like. It's definitely a lot faster than the 1070 was running. I got a better, better way of doing this here. fun got all the number nines done and started the number tens I have about either four or five different designs for the number tens uh, so that actually makes it a little more uh, economical to run on a digital press uh, one one thing to remember uh, you do need to get specifically digital window envelopes if you're gonna be doing toner on the envelopes that's because the little clear windows on the regular windows don't take the heat so they got to use magic plastic to uh, to work that out so you got to make sure for windows you get digital number tens so since this is black and white printing it's not as cost effective if it, if these envelopes were color uh, it would actually compete with an offset press uh, just because of setup time and all that uh, but I'm not necessarily uh, set on running envelopes in-house. I will still outsource depending on the print quantity, the number of colors, 
uh, how busy I am here and how quick I need them uh, because that took, well, it was running at about 3,600 envelopes an hour. Uh, so it took like between two and a half and three hours to print those uh, 8,700 envelopes. Um, so that was actually, I mean, it's a fair amount of time. It's really slow if you look at it from one point of view, but if you look at it from another point of view, it's really fast. Because if I were to outsource those, it would probably be out a week until they showed up here. Uh, so, you know, a few hours versus a week, you know, it's, there's not a right and wrong way to do it. It's just two different ways of doing it. And remember, uh, don't think to yourself that, uh, it doesn't cost that much to print these because it's just a little bit of toner coverage. Even if you're servicing the machine yourself, you got to keep in mind that your drums are wearing down as you're printing your wires, your belts, everything's still wearing, even though you're just using a little bit of toner. So keep that in mind. You still have to charge a decent amount to run just black on a digital press. I should point out too, I didn't even put these envelopes things on the back. There's two weights uh, that I could move over from the 1070, but I didn't bother and it ran fine. I did put uh, this little clip here that uh, keeps the flap from catching as it feeds. And uh, you know, it kept me stepping. Well, I think that's enough fun for one day. Thanks for watching. You know, I, I think it's interesting uh, because everybody's world is kind of their own normal. And uh, it's interesting how many people from my last video uh, say, I would never believe that you moved that cutter in by yourself. Or, you know, I've had people say, I can't believe you do that much printing by yourself. And the crazy thing is, is that's just normal for me. I wouldn't have known anything different, uh, but it's cool. It goes both ways because there's plenty of people out there that said, Dan, you need to update your cutter. That was just normal for me. I just used a manual back gauge, but the reality is, is you guys help me and I help you. The plan is working. So thanks for watching. Catch you next week.